Good evening and welcome to Across the Pitch. We're the soccer show for people who think in furnace is where you put your firewood. <laughs> I mean, that's not wrong. <laughs> in furnace. Yeah, right. in, in fairness. In fairness, I think that's actually, yeah, if, depending on where you put the uh, the emphasis, that's probably right. <laughs> so we, we bring this up because uh, our team of the month, Barrow AFC, we had a, a little bit of a, a mix-up when we interviewed uh, Seamus Keneally. The, no, no, you uh, did, mate. You did. Uh, <laughs> I, I had the, the mix-up when I... I interviewed uh, Seamus Keneally the other week, and uh, <laughs> I, I had noticed that he lived in, in Barrow, but uh, evidently the Barrow that he lives in is in Lancashire near Accrington, mm-hmm. which is not in Furness, which is right. where the uh, Barrow AFC that we're going to be covering uh, throughout the month is located. So, uh, yeah, and you know what? That's, that's a common mistake to make, Phil, so don't beat yourself up too much but i'm still going to give you shit for it because (laughs) there are a number of towns that 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 have the same name and it might be just because you know it's uh old english and it goes back to the i don't know it was the tree on the hill underneath the creek and that's what they named their little village do you know what i mean Well, i think it's it's kind of similar to how like there's a glendale arizona and a glendale california or 36 different spring fields (laughs) That's, that's that's just a lack of imagination (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but we also have a really exciting announcement uh, regarding Barrow AFC uh, is that we are going to have an across the pitch banner yes. in their fan zone. Uh, thanks to our correspondent, John Earnshaw has set that up and uh, at their upcoming match against Knotts County, across the pitch is going to be represented at Barrow AFC's ground. So we're, we're really looking excited to that. Yeah. I, and uh, we're going to have some interviews coming up related to that also. But tonight, mm. what are we doing, guys? Right, okay, that was my cue, wasn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on tonight's show, we attempt something that has never been done before, a clash of the diminutives, a football manager of sorts, if you will, and that's what we were going to call from it, apart from the cease and desist we received from Sega earlier. So instead, on tonight's across-the-pitch soccer coach, we pit two of our favourite teams together to see who will come out on top in a match that is highly unlikely ever to happen. On my left, <laughs> in the red corner, Phil Stat King Kennedy and his team of ne'er duels, Accrington Stanley. Versus, on my right, on Stanley on. On my right, <laughs> in the other red corner, Matt, Mr. Wizard Robards and his band of vagabonds, Phoenix Rising. <laughs> No cheers over there. All right, fine. It's very quiet <laughs> there in the in the red corner. <laughs> what will happen tonight? I have absolutely no idea, which is why I am your blind hyperpartisan referee, VAR. I mean, Aaron Ayers. <laughs> you're, you're at Stockley Stockley Park right now. You're not in Phoenix. You've actually uh, traveled to London, haven't that's, you? That's quite right. I, I've flown over there specifically for this tonight, <laughs> so I can sit there absolutely blind. There are no monitors in this place, believe it or not. They're and, not watching and I, anything. What happened was you you showed up and they wouldn't let you in the building, so you're just kind of sitting out there with with your. Oh, camera. is that what happened? <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Well, I can say, gentlemen, and our fabulous listeners, cast your doubts aside and turn this special episode up. It's an unlikely matchup and may never be attempted again. It depends on how this goes. On with the clash! (laughs) But first... Oh, well, but first... (laughs) It's been a couple of weeks since I've done this, but first... Uh, So just to give a a little bit of a... a I'm sorry, first. first... But first, that's that's Matt's kid. Damn, we are rusty, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> you go, <ahead>, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> 
make sure you guys head on over to uh, the various social media websites and give us a follow. Just search Across the Pitch. That's where we interact on match days, before match days, and all throughout the week as we try to watch as much football as humanly possible. <laughs> i tell you what, we do. And just to give you guys a little bit of a backstory of how this episode came to be, uh, Peter Latham, who is, of course, the head of the Accrington Stanley Supporters Club over in what's up, Accrington. What's up, Blake, I have to say, uh, if I can interject there. He really is. And uh, the other day, uh, him and I were kind of having a discussion and I had mentioned to him, uh, you know, we, we always kind of talk about how uh, one day there needs to be a Phoenix Accrington friendly. And I was saying how I thought that it would be a, a really even matchup with Accrington being kind of a, a mid table team in the third tier of England and Phoenix being one of the top teams in the second tier of the U.S. I kind of said, you know, that I thought that kind of evened out and put them kind of. Uh, evenly matched and he said well you, you know how would we ever figure that out and <laughs> this is what i came up with <laughs> there you yeah, go i think uh, yeah i think it's important to note though that it's i was thinking about this today it's kind of hard to kind of differentiate okay where would say the mls fall in the english system because i think you have some mls teams that could compete uh you know in the championships and then I think you have some MLS teams that would struggle to right. stay in League One. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Right, I, right. And and I think that, that we're probably all on the same page. And that was uh, exactly what I had said to Peter is that I thought maybe like a, an Atlanta United or, or a Seattle was on level with maybe like a, a Derby County where maybe a, a lower um, yeah. team like Cincinnati would probably be League <laughs> One. And then right. with the, uh, the USL that a top team like Phoenix might be mid-table in League One. And then a team like Las Vegas would probably be bottom table league two would be LAFC. They, they'd probably be, yeah, maybe top, top end of the table championship. I don't think automatic promotion, but I, I think they'd be fighting for a top six. Do you think uh, New Mexico United is non-league? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say yeah, Vegas is they, non-league. Yeah, I think Vegas would be non-league, yeah. No, I'm not being nasty. I think that's probably the level they're at, eh? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I think a majority of the USL League One teams would probably fit into the, the non-league, and then I think USL Championship teams would probably filter in somewhere in League Two. Hey, um, I wasn't on the show a couple of weeks back, but the, you know, going back to what you said about Barrow um, playing Notts County, now that's that's a fascinating matchup because Notts County last year, of course, were relegated from uh, the leagues from League Two. Um, and this is their first year trying to get back up into the leagues. And Barrow is was voted out in 74, I believe it was, and they're trying to get up for the first time since then as well. This this could be a really, really good match, and I don't know if we can watch it. We'll have to see if we can share some highlights or something. I digress. Well, I do, uh, I do understand that after that match that, uh, that we may have some special uh, photographs coming over uh, but, but we'll we'll keep that under wraps. Okay. Until it happens. All right. I look forward to it. But first, what do we need to do here, guys? What's our plan? Well, since it, the the game is going to be in Phoenix, is what we decided that if this this dream match that is happening on February thirtieth. <laughs> 2020 at Casino Arizona Field. So do, do we need Why? to sing the national nah. anthem since we do that nonsense here nah. or just, just <laughs> skip it and, and kick the ball off at 8.01 hey. when the game starts at 8 like they do it over I there? I do have a question, though. Why why was it Casino Arizona Field? Why wasn't it a neutral venue like uh, Old Trafford or something? <laughs> well, I didn't want to have to travel anymore. Oh, right. Fair enough. I think that <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason. Okay. That that's as much that's not really the only reason. Yeah, <laughs> we we didn't want to have to go anywhere. It's too expensive. <laughs> okay, got it. Right, moving on. <laughs> so uh, I think the best way to do this is probably start at goalkeeper and just work our way forward. Well, well, real quick, uh, Matt, did you want to explain how the uh, the scoring is going to work before we uh, we yeah. get into it? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start goalkeeper moving forward. Uh, we'll go left to right across the field. So, for instance, we'll go goalkeeper, left back, left center back. 
Uh, and then we will present our case for why our player, our starting lineup from the entire roster of our respective teams, uh, we will we will pitch them uh, Shark Tank style. Yes. And then Mr. Var over there, mm-hmm. Aaron, is going to select uh, the best one that he thinks, and that person then receives a point for their team. We'll go through our whole team at the end of this. Uh, whoever has the most points Man. wins. But like that show we, that was once on TV, um, yeah, we like to say the points that. don't matter. <laughs> so, you know, what I, show you know was? I, I realize I really set myself up for a fall with this show. You realize that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> by, by being neutral, I'm the one that's having to decide that I'm going to get the hate mail. Bring yeah. it on, bitches. Yeah. I mean, Bring it on. <laughs> I think that's why we decided against that to do that. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, that, that's why uh, we're not doing train me, right? Okay, we've had enough of that. All right, and, all right. Uh, and so uh, we uh, we did the the four four two three one formation. Uh, we uh, kind of decided ahead of time that that we were going to do the same formation just to make things line up a little bit better logistically. We we know that the the clubs don't necessarily right. both play this, but uh, you know, just for. Uh, Logistic purposes, we're doing the uh, the four two three one uh, formation. So uh, right. go ahead and uh, and you uh, you can go ahead and get started with uh, your. Uh, and I, 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 I think that's 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 my job, isn't it? Can I get a whistle? <laughs> All right, we go. Here, here we go. For, first two. It should be said that we picked a starting eleven, and then we'll each do three subs. That uh, yes, will make yes. their way off the bench. <laughs> yes. um, if we're into the team. Is this is a full 90 minutes. So, I don't uh, think I've got this in me. All right, go on. <laughs> no, we'll move through this quickly. We'll move through this quickly. All right, all right. We got this. I'm just giving you shit. All right, so, so am I starting here? Oh, hang on. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're going to win straight. Hey, no, no, no. I think I, uh, as VA, I think uh, we got to go away. I think it. we're going to go away. Yeah, just to balance it out a little bit. Let's, let's uh, toss the coins. Come in. Uh, Aki's called heads, Phil over there's called heads, and it's Accrington's kickoff. Off you go, Phil. All right, well, so my uh, my starting goalkeeper is Joe Bursick, uh, and, and it should definitely be mentioned that uh, one of the things that we did decide with this uh, is that any players who currently were unavailable during to injury would not be a part of this, so that... Uh, that eliminated uh, Dimitar Evtimov, who's currently out with an injury for my list. Just wanted to, to mention just, that. Just, just, just as a reminder, really today just... is February 30th, 2020. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, February 30th, 2020. And, uh, and so that, that left me to uh, to choose between uh, uh, Joseph Bursick and Toby Savin and... Uh, uh, Salvin is a 19-year-old keeper who uh, has not started any games yet this year, so that really left me away with sure. Bursick, but <laughs> that is definitely not uh, not a bad choice. Uh, he is also a 19-year-old English keeper. Since he's come on, he's made 14 starts so far this year. Uh, he's got a 61% save percentage. Three clean sheets. He's won six games, lost six games, and uh, and drawn two. One thing that I would say about Bursic that it really sets him apart is his ability with his feet. He has actually come in and taken free kicks at points for Accrington Stanley. Uh, he has also uh, taken penalty kicks and made them in a shootout. So that's certainly another element is that people talk so much about the sweeper keeper. He even goes beyond that to the point that at times he actually becomes another offensive player on the field. He's been very solid in goal. Uh, like I said, uh, almost a 62% save percentage uh, and uh, uh, giving uh, 1.57 goals per 90. So he, he's allowing less than the two goals per game. And at 19 years old, this kid's just going to keep getting better. Doesn't say a lot when you when you your pitch for your goalkeeper is that they can take free kicks. Doesn't say a lot about your outfit. Oh snap! Bam! <laughs> there it is. 
No, the first I think throw down uh, of the look, match. Bursic, 19. I think for what he's doing at 19, it's very good. But when you're playing... No, 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 no. That's my job. A competitive You team. stick to your side over there, Matt. You stick to your side over there, right? You're talking about your goal. You got to go with the big Zach Lubin. Oh! Three, <laughs> three inches taller than Bursic. So he's going to get to those, those shots that are just out of Bursic's reach. Zach Lubin will get to those. Uh, 31 appearances total for Phoenix Rising since he's come. Now, keep in mind, he was a tryout, uh, a walk-on, if you would. Uh, we, we got him in an open tryout. He's made 31 appearances for the club, making 81 saves with 14 clean sheets. Last season, Phoenix conceded only 38 goals throughout the entire season, which was the lowest of any Western Conference team. Um, and so there is significant age difference between there, Lubin 30, Bursic 14, but he has the experience. 14. You need, or 19. <laughs> he has that winning experience you need now to win. He's taller, so he can claim those crosses and set pieces. And again, 14 clean sheets to three clean sheets. I think it speaks for itself. Zach Lubin should be your goalkeeper. So you've heard the arguments, Joseph Bursek versus Zach Lubin. Um, we've got a young and coming, promising uh, upstart, I guess you could say, on the Aki side, on the, on, the, on the Phoenix Rising side. We've got the stalwart. We've got the solid brick wall with eyes, Zach Lubin. He's got this one round. Sorry, guys. He's won this one purely because of the reach and experience. He, uh, yeah, that's it. He, he's, he's knocked him out with the reach. Yeah, I mean, with, with Lubin's experience, it's certainly uh, hard for me to argue with that. I mean, Bursic is definitely up and coming, but he, he's only started 14 games. He's 19 years old. So I, I can definitely understand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Promising future for the guy. Promising future for the guy. Yep. Right. I think you're you're kind of put in a hard position with the injuries, uh, and definitely a guy like Bursic, 19 on loan at a League One side. Uh, it's a great place for him to get that where's, first team experience to to be playing. Where's with he on loan from? Players and from Stoke City, Stoke City. Oh, so he's moved up in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, I think he can. He has a good future. Absolutely, but unfortunately, it's one nil to Phoenix Rising. On to the next round. Ding, ding. All right, I, my, my defense is where I plan to win this out. So. Okay, you, you might be onto something here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so starting at left back, this was difficult because I, I'm hashtag Dia gang. Uh, Amadou Dia, club legend, has uh, gotten the opportunity to go play with Sporting KC. Looks like he's made the team. Oh. Hopefully we'll start. So uh, Amadou, if you're listening to this, we're super proud of you. We love you here in Phoenix. Uh, go out there and and do what you do for that club. Uh, so I had to go with Awasu Ansi Cantor or Kanta, depending <laughs> on where you're looking at. Uh, he's a 26 year old defender. We acquired him uh, from Orange County SC. That's where he played the last couple of years. Again, he's he's replacing a club legend. Um, so I didn't have anything much to go on, but what I've seen in preseason last year, he made 51 appearances for Orange County. Uh, he had two assists, um, but what got me excited about him what is, was his discipline. Um, for a guy that's playing defense, left back particular, uh, in those 51 appearances, he's only gotten five yellow cards, which shows me that he's not just going to, you know, just go in clumsily on a challenge and pick up, you know, maybe yellow cards that lead to some sort of suspension, but he's, he's disciplined in some way. And from what I've seen from him in preseason, uh, in highlights, he looks to be a very good one-on-one -on -one defender. Um, so I think he can make the left back position his, and it's going to be really important for how he plays with the person in front of him. All right. All right. Uh, solid introduction from a guy I've never heard of, Accrington. Well, well, that's a, this is actually kind of a, an interesting matchup because we uh, both have a player at left back with ties to Ghana, Jerome Apaku, who is uh, English but has Ghanaian heritage, uh, is my choice at left back. Uh, and this was actually a bit of a, an interesting position for me, only because Jerome Apaku is such a versatile player that I considered moving him into the midfield. Uh, however, uh, Elise, who is the other player that we'll talk about a little bit later, would have been the choice at left back had I moved uh, 
Jerome into the deep midfield role. Uh, however, I believe Elise's best position is center. Uh, so I, I did decide that the Jerome Apaku is the best left back on Accrington Stanley. He is by far the most physically gifted player on Stanley's roster. He's the fastest player. He's the tallest player at, at six foot six. The guy still has incredible footwork uh, and on ball ability. Uh, he handles most of the throw ins. Uh, his height is huge advantage for that. Uh, obviously, he, he's good with clearances, headers. Uh, he's a guy who has, uh, I believe, three assists this year. Uh, despite hey. playing, uh, 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 ding, 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 ding. All right, that's enough. That's the end of that round. I think we've heard enough. <laughs> it's over. He's already dead. Okay, Phil. He's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Conte, or however you pronounce his name for Phoenix Rising left back. Look, I don't know anything about him. Mr. Wizard doesn't know anything about him. He comes from Orange County. That's not really much to boast about. He's unproven. Opaku. Probably not without his problems at Accrington Stanley, but a pure raw talent. He looks, he would look great in the midfield. Phil, you're right. Um, you know, he would go on a busting run akin to something Patrick Vieira would have done back in the day for Arsenal. Unfortunately, this one here, Matt, is going to Accrington. Opaku runs all over Conte, or have you say his name? Con- I don't know. Con- I don't know. Con- it's weird, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll look forward to our uh, local Phoenix Rising. Uh, commentators butcher his name till the end of the season. I'm sure. Yeah, I think I think officially it ends with an H on Phoenix stuff, but other stuff it ends with an R. Uh, it's just however you want to say it. I guess. Well, he, he's on Instagram. We should just look up. You know, they, they said, said Twitter. You should look him up. No, that's not going to help you. It's not going to help you because I when he came on the other day in in one of the preseason matches, I heard Kante. I'm like, what? Really? We got another Chelsea connection here. Oh, well, we have, there's another guy. There's another guy that was a, he's like a 20 year old uh, striker oh, slash winger. That's the that one I'm played thinking for of. Portland Timbers. That's Academy. the one I'm thinking his of. His last okay, name no. is Conte. All right. Yeah. Never mind. Carry on. Yeah. Different guy. Okay. <laughs> Very similar name. Different guy. <laughs> All right. I need to brush up on my rising stuff. Opaku's a beast and he will be, uh, again, alone for him is, is great. It gets that, that first team, senior minutes um, look for him to go back to Fulham next year and make a, make a claim to be a starting uh, defensive back. Yeah. I mean, he's a guy with a premier right, yeah. ceiling. Right. Cool. I think you're right. All right. Under round three. Oh, oh, oh quick score check here. Uh, Phoenix rising one, Accrington Stanley one round three. So now we're going to move to, uh, to center back. Uh, and my first center back is Mark Hughes, the uh, the veteran leader, 32 years old. He is one of the guys who has been a staple at, uh, at Accrington Stanley now. He is in his fifth season with the club. He's been there since 2015. Uh, in each of the previous three years, he's gotten over 3,000 minutes, over 4,000 minutes each of the past two years. He played 46 games, started 46 games. This guy is an absolute iron man. I mean, uh, th- this is a guy that he- he's Mr. Accrington Stanley. Uh, when it comes to the, the back four, he's the one that's directing the traffic. You have out there, you have on Accrington Stanley, here's the important thing, is Apaku, who we just talked about, he's 20 years old. Then we have Callum Johnson, who we're going to talk about later. He's only 24 years old. Uh, and then we also mm. have Ross Sykes. Uh, he's 22 years old. So you have Hughes out there is the veteran. With uh, with three younger guys, he is the the heart and soul uh, of the the Aki defense, and uh, he did actually have a a suspension uh, where uh, where he missed that last game against Oxford, and, and we all remember what happened there. So if if that doesn't tell you how important this guy is, I I don't know what does. All right, um, so pretty low on stats there. Phil disappointed in that. Uh, Matt, over to you. 
Yeah, so this is where I think uh, I think my my defense. I'm going to cause maybe a little bit of surprise, maybe some uprising. I don't know. But my left center back, so he's going to pair over there with the new boy. Uh, but he's not new to Phoenix. In fact, he's 26 year old defender Joseph Farrell. Uh, he's coming into his third season at this club. He's already made 53 appearances, and in those 53 appearances, he has scored six goals. He's contributed with one assist. Uh, and what I love about Joseph Farrell is that he has a great understanding of the defense. He's been working for Shantz now for a couple of years. Uh, but outside of that, he is a vocal leader and he is an organizer of that back four. And I think when we pair him with my other center back, I think that's our best center back pairing. But when you put Joseph Farrell in the game, he is going to uh, produce stops. He is going to move the ball quickly. He is not going to be concerned about pressure. Um, he is going to yell and scream and he will get in the box to try and make something happen on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, so he is a stalwart back there for me, Joseph Farrell. All right. That's the end of the round. Man, I have to say these two guys, uh, like the old men at the back, you know what I mean? The, the, the guys with the steely eyed stares that makes the youngsters sphincters palpitate whenever they make a mistake. You know what I mean? Um, both bossing around the defenses there. Oh man, can I can I do a draw? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 you can do whatever you want. Very, very yeah, similar, similar players yeah. to their roles with the club for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and that's what's making it difficult to separate the two. I'm going to call it a draw. Yeah, I mean, and, and they're really the they're the guys that kind of uh, transcend statistics anyway. So I mean. They're they're not the guys that are out there, you know, scoring goals or anything like no. that. I mean, they, these are the guys that are uh, the the leaders that are clearing the, the balls out of the box, the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Quite right. Uh, they're the unsung heroes, really, of the team. You know, and uh, God bless. I was one at one time, and I was unsung for a reason because uh, I was shit. Um, but uh, you know, these guys—they're the ones that make sure that you know your in a freaking line when you're defending. If you if you've missed a header as the balls come across, you're gonna know about it, and it's gonna be from these guys. Calling it a draw, still one one. Let's move on. One one one. Very good. Uh, so paired with my my boy Joseph Farrell, uh, I had to go with. Uh, this was tough. So, uh, and I think you might guys might be surprised with how this back four shakes out. Um, I I want to hear this. this okay, so I, I went with 27 year old defenders. So we got a, a very young back line here: 26, 26, Ooh, and 27. Uh -huh. 27 year old yeah. defender AJ Cochran uh, coming into mm. his second year in Phoenix. Uh, last year he made 27 appearances for the club, uh, and he pr he contributed with four assists, which for a center back I think is is a good outp output. 27 appearances, four assists. And again, I'm, I'm a very big um, believer in, in discipline when it comes to defense. Uh, A.J. Cochran only was booked twice in 27 appearances, and that's huge at the center back position. Uh, you're going to constantly have forwards running at you, um, wingers coming in and out, and how you handle that, not diving into tackles recklessly is huge. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but he is confident on the ball. He is good with his feet, and he can play a long diagonal pass to one of the wingers which can open up an attacking move very quickly. Uh, he's cool under pressure, and he recognizes danger quickly. I couldn't even tell you the number of times last year uh, that he recognized some danger on the wings, and he slid over very quickly to cover. All right, sounds great. Um, yeah, all right, okay. I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment until second half. Over to you, well, I, Mr. I, I feel like I, I'm going to win this one because I, I have one of <laughs> the very best players on all of Accrington Stanley, uh, which is Ross Sykes. Uh, Ross Sykes is, uh, he was born in 1999, so he's actually, uh, actually he turns 21, 21 next month, so he, he's not, not even old enough to go to the pub yet. Uh, now he's another tall guy. He's six. Wait, wait, wait! No, 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 no! It's eighteen in the UK. Sorry, but no. no. Ah, but Remem he's still young. He's still young. <laughs> you know. Remember the game's here, though. So. Oh, okay. Well, he won't be going to the pub. He'll be going to the bar. So fair enough. All right, all right. 
carry on. Thank you, Matt. Well, well interjected there. But I'm blind. I'm the VAR. Fuck yeah. you. You can't get it. <laughs> We're not blind. You're just watching it on a monitor. <laughs> but, uh, but thousands of miles away. But, but going back to what I was saying, it is Ross Sykes. Oh man, this guy is a player. Six foot five inches tall. Uh, like I said, he's just twenty years old uh, and just. He's a guy that gets better every single week. You can just see his game is just growing. He is incredible at clearing the ball out with the with the headers. I mean, I would say every game this guy probably saves at least two goals all by himself. Uh, Matt was talking about how important it is not to get yellow cards. The last time he got a yellow card was October 12th. He has 56 interceptions. This is a guy who on this continent would already be an MLS player. This is a guy who will not be on Accrington Stanley next year unless they get promoted to the championship. Probably not going to happen. Ross Sykes will be in the championship and probably in the Premier League one day. There's, there's, you, you, Ross Sykes would be the best defender on Phoenix Rising, period. Ding, ding, end of the round. Our other pair of center backs. Interesting one. AJ Cochran, uh, relative, he was in and out of the Rick Shantz team last year. He had some good games. He also had some okay games. Um, on the other hand, I have to say, Ross Sykes for Accrington Stanley has it, this guy, I don't know, does he have feet made of some sort of lightweight steel whereby the ball sort of stops at his feet and then he can hoof it downfield to start the next play? He's six foot five and just a solid defender. This guy, I don't think I've seen a better defender in that league. Sorry, he's got you. It's one to Accrington. So we're 2 1 1 now. We, <laughs> I think we we can probably drop the second one. But yes, it is. Uh, well, Rising is at home, so it's one Phoenix Rising, Accrington Stanley, two. All right, right back. We have uh, our boy, Callum Johnson. I mean, I should get the point just because his name is Callum, but uh, uh, <laughs> I mean... Solid heads up. And, and you know what? Because I am hyper-partisan as VAR, it's going to be hard to vote against a guy who's actually been on the show. Uh, right. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but carry on. Not that I'm giving the game away here, Matthew. Well, I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> this. He, he leads League One in successful crosses. Uh, he has several game-winning assists this year. Uh, he's an Iron Man. He's played every game this year except for one. Uh, you know, we we've talked to him. He's a guy that spends three hours a day in the film room. I mean, th- this guy is dedicated to his craft. He's another guy. He's only, I, I believe, twenty-three years old now, uh, and getting better every game. Just watching it last year versus this year, it's just the growth is incredible. This is another guy that's going to be in the championship, would already be an NMLS player on this continent. Fantastic. All right, that's that's a solid argument. Let's turn it over to Matt, Mr. Wizard, see what he's got in his pocket for right back. Well, I got stats. All right. Not oh, just oh, uh, pulling at heartstrings right, okay. here. Uh, this was where it got tough for me. Um, so last year, Mustafa Dumboya, one and done. Hard to see him go. He's in Tampa Bay. So I was looking at our lineup thinking, who do we play? Again, we have a new player, uh, Darnell King. I could have played him, but I ultimately went with the 22-year-old from Liverpool Football Club's academy, Corey yeah. Whelan. He is entering his first full season with Phoenix. Uh, So he came over midway through the season last year. He made nine appearances in total, primarily playing the center back position, where he did add two assists. Now, for us, his primary position has been right back, but he has been much more successful. I'm sorry, his primary position for us has been center back, but he has been much more successful at the right back position, uh, where in 61 appearances he has scored two goals and provided three assists. Uh, He is quick. He is fast. uh, He's fast. He's going to go up the line. He's not afraid to take people on. I think him and ultimately my right winger will form a very good partnership, overlapping. 
He can provide crosses and assists and score some goals. Um, just there was no other choice for me. I think Corey Whelan uh, had to be my starting right back. Oh boy, oh boy, this is going to be a tough one. Okay, having watched both of these players, um, I have to say, yeah, the young Liverpool. Oh God, he's he looks fantastic, doesn't he? He's he's probably not one for the USL for much longer either. Much like Callum Johnson isn't for. Uh, for League One. Um, wow. I'm not going to do a draw on this one, though, because we do have a tiebreaker. Immensely talented players. Oh. The only tiebreaker I can pull out of my hat is Callum Johnson's been on the show. Sorry, that's the way it goes. I'm VAR. Good night. <laughs> so, um, All right, so now we're going to move to the, the midfield. Quick, quick score and... update here. Quick score update. Uh, Phoenix Rising 1, Accrington Stanley 3. As we move into the midfield, it's all for Rising to do. Hmm, sounds familiar, doesn't it? So we're moving into a midfield uh, of this 4-2-3-1, um, starting what you could call the left side of my two. Um, but this is going to be more my pivot player, um, my, my defensive midfielder, the 22-year-old Jamaican who has uh, played in Phoenix since 2017, back when they were Arizona United, Kevin Lambert. Uh, He has made 51 appearances for the team. Um, He has been a stalwart there in the middle of the park. He can shut down play. Uh, He can provide an outlet pass, and he's not afraid to shoot. He has scored eight goals uh, in his time. He has provided six assists, and he is a beast willing to put in a tackle but venture forward, which is exactly what you want. Uh, in that midfield. I've got a, a tough, uh, tough guy to beat here because Kevin Lambert is certainly a stalwart here in Phoenix. And uh, the, the guy that I have here first, and I, I do unfortunately have to uh, put out a, a little bit of a disclaimer here because uh, of a news story that has come out today that I, I don't have all of the details on. Uh, but Sam Finley, who is the, the first midfielder that I've selected, uh, it was announced that there's some charges against him from the FA today uh, regarding something that he said on the field to another mm. player. That's all that, that has been released, but it's it certainly... So does that mean he, he's out of your team, or uh, are you pulling him in hoping he'll get off on, on uh, some sort of... Well, well, what what I'm getting at is that I don't know enough about the story to know what was said, or I haven't heard his side of the story. I haven't heard a club statement. So basically, I'm, really- I'm having to say that this report is out, but I'm making my selection as if the report hadn't happened because I don't know the details yet. Innocent until proven guilty. Brilliant VAR rules on that. Carry on. <laughs> okay. So uh, on the playing field, uh, Sam Finley, he's been the guy. Uh, he he actually took the, the number eight shirt the, that Scott Brown used to wear because he plays that number eight position where uh, he's kind of that, that midfielder that, that hangs around, uh, uh, around the midfield circle and you know, tries to keep the ball in the zone and indirects the traffic back there. And he, he's a solid defender, but he uh, he can also make some good passes. And uh, he had four assists last season. Uh, this year he has two goals and an assist so far. He's 26 years old. He's uh, a little bit of a late starter because this is his second season in Accrington. And it's also his second season as a pro. So, uh, um, He's in the prime of his career by average standards. Most players will hit, you know, between 26 and 28 is considered the prime year. So he's right there. Uh, he's a very active player on the field. Uh, he's uh, he's won 43 fouls so far this year, uh, 63 crosses. Uh, he's uh, 55 tackles won. So he, he's a guy that just does a little bit of everything. Uh, Really, a, a lot 
similar player to Lambert and, you know, just kind of a, a jack of all trades. And uh, he, he's another guy that, that definitely you just see the improvement year to year. I don't necessarily know that he's a guy that I would see for sure moving up to the championship. Some of the defenders definitely. I I definitely think that this guy uh, is a guy that will be a, a solid starter in League One for years to come. And, you know, it's just the kind of guy that you need on your team back there playing that that deep mid that, that we talked about is so important, the, the spine position. All right, that's the end of the round. You know what? Sam does direct traffic well. Um, I've seen him move Aki well in transition from defense to offense. He is a solid worker. He's a hard worker. Um, there's nothing flashy about him. Uh, Kevin Lambert, on the other hand, well, you know, he's got to call up for the reggae boys for the Jamaican national team. Um, he is an exciting player. He can. He is the one that will run you from. Did I get that wrong, Matt? He, he's, he, he did get a call out for the reggae boys, didn't he? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a reggae yeah, on the right, national Right, okay, good. I just heard a groan from back there. I'm like, oh, shit, did I mess that up? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no, that's that perfect. Was, oh. Yeah. oh, okay. And here's the other thing. Because I'm VAR and I'm completely hyper-partisan, he's on the back of my Phoenix Rising uh, Copper State jersey this year. So this one's going to Phoenix Rising. They're coming back. <laughs> the comeback is on. All right, well, I think that I, I feel pretty confident going into this next one because I have the captain, Seamus Keneally, who is a guy who transcends statistics. I mean, you, you could look at the stat sheet all day. <laughs> and, that's, um, that's a great way of saying shit. They're not great, but you know what? He's better than the sum of his parts. All right, carry on, Phil. Sorry, mate. Go on. Sorry, I don't mean to pull you apart here. Oh, no, no. I mean, he, he's not a guy that, that you're going to look at the stat sheet and anything's going to jump out to you other than the fact that he's out there every single day and he's the captain every single day. But if you take a look and you watch the field, this guy covers ground like nobody I have ever seen. I will tell you, anytime you find the ball on the field anywhere, Seamus Keneally is going to be within 10 feet of it. The guy is just a soccer ball magnet. He's the leader of the team. He's been the captain for uh, going on six years now. Uh, he's captain a team that won a League Two title, you cannot understate having a leader with championship experience on your side. He's a guy that he's John Coleman's go-to guy, and he, he's also, he's a guy who doesn't make mistakes. We talk so much about a guy like Mustafi on Arsenal, who's a, a fantastically talented player, <laughs> fills up the stat sheet, and then he makes these boneheaded ass problems that cost you goals. Seamus Keneally, I don't know if the guy has ever made a mistake that costs the team a goal. He is just so technically sound, and I would have him on my team every day of the week. All right. Big call out. Over to you, Mr. Wizard. So my second midfielder in this this two uh, is a guy um, who can interchange with uh, either the person playing the 10 in front of him. Uh, he can drop back and defend as Lambert, Lambert goes forward. Uh, there's just a lot of interchange going on. So I had to go with the 24-year-old Spanish midfielder coming into his second year with Phoenix, Jose Aguinaga. Uh, 32 appearances last year for Phoenix. Uh, during that time, he added three goals, but more importantly, he added seven assists. Um, so his his goals and assists per 90 is 0.5 through the season, which is, is very good for a, a person in the midfield. Um, while he'd be playing in that midfield too, uh, his instructions from, from me would be to get forward more to provide options for Becaro and the wingers. And again, it's, it's all about that interchange, confusing the midfield of the opposing team. Uh, he can run circles around players. 
And last year he developed a very good partnership with Lambert, which then allows uh, my number 10, a little more freedom in the midfield to work his magic. Um, so that's my two Lambert and Aguinaga, two solid defenders Ooh. for Phoenix rising midfielders, midfielders, They're solid midfielders. Ooh, this is a tough one. Um, but in reality, it's an easy one for me because VAR. Oh, Captain, my Captain, Seamus Kennelly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we had a chat to him recently. Go back and have a listen to our episode. Really good guy. Just a wonderful chat. Um, and also, as Phil said, he's a League Two title winner and he's won more things than Aganaga has. So uh, carry on. And that's the VAR's virtual halftime whistle. It's one of the best whistles you'll ever hear and never see. It's time for some tea or maybe some $1 beers if that's your thing. <laughs> it's probably been really hard on Aguinaga. Uh, don't mind him as a player, honestly. I think he's all right. I think he's improving, um, especially under Rick Shantz. Looking forward to see what he can do in the midfield this year. Absolutely. I, I think that uh, bo- both are quality players. Uh, I mean... You can't really go wrong with, with any of these players that we've talked no. about so far on, on either side. No, not at all. And and please, Phoenix Rising fans, Aki fans, this is all in good fun. It's all hypothetical, unless it's not. And then we can, you know, belt it out at Casino Arizona Field. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a dollar beer night if they're still doing it there. Yeah. All yeah, right, there update, score update, Phoenix Rising. Yeah, Phoenix what's the Rising score? Two, Accrington Stanley, four... But I have a feeling that uh, Phoenix Rising might be turning this game around shortly as we move into the forwards. I said I, I'm going to need to win it on the, the back. So uh, I, I think that, that it's it's playing out true to uh, form so far. So uh, this is where the hard All work right. starts, though, because Phoenix has some <laughs> attackers. We'll be back with the second half right after this.